Welcome to session one, Introduction to Statistics. Statistics is a subject which can and can be and is applied to every aspect of human endeavor, including business and economics. This session seeks to introduce students to the definition, importance, and types of statistics. At the end of the session, the student will define what is meant by statistics, explain what is meant by descriptive statistics and inferential statistics, distinguish between qualitative variable and quantitative variable, and also distinguish between a discrete variable and a continuous variable. The topics to be, uh, to be covered are what is statistics, why study statistics, the types of statistics, data and variables, and then finally, sources of data. What is statistics? There are two definitions of statistics. The first refers to numbers or data. The second refers to a method of study or an art. This course concerns the second definition, even though we shall on occasion refer to numbers or data, which is the first definition. In brief, statistics is a science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting data to assist in more effective decisions. Why should we study statistics? H. Jean Wells, a prolific English writer who writes on a variety of subject areas, said this, and I quote, Statistical thinking will one day be as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write. What this means essentially is that without the knowledge of statistics, you cannot function in the world of business, economics, or any other aspect of life. Because statistical principles can be used to address important issues in science, business, economics, as well as questions from daily life. Some common questions statistics can answer are, do mobile phones cause cancer? Is the economy growing? Should I invest my money in stocks or mutual funds? Which political party is likely to win the next election? Knowledge of statistical methods can enable you answer these questions. Indeed, it is impossible for one to function today as a manager without a good foundation in statistics. Now we turn our attention to the types of statistics. There are two types of statistics. That is the acts of statistics. We have what is called descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics refers to the methods used to collect and summarize information which will make it easily comprehensible. And the form of summary measures could be graphical or numeric. For example, you can use uh, graphical techniques like histograms, bar charts, but with the numeric uh, examples are the mean, the mode, the median, which are averages in essence. On the other hand, inferential statistics, or what can also be called statistical inference, concerns the relationship between sample data and the population. In other words, how we can draw conclusions about the population based on just a sample taken from the population. We shall delve into the details as we proceed. Now, there are certain terms you need to understand. Population refers to a collection of all the elements that are of interest or belong to a defined group. So, for example, if we're looking at all the students under the distance education program studying a CON 214, that whole class is the population of a CON 214 students. 
Now, the process of collecting information on all elements in the population is called a census. A sample is a subset or just a part of the population. So, for example, if we took the entire class of a con two one four students in distance education, we could just select some from the class for a particular purpose. That part selected is a sample. Samples are usually taken to obtain the required information because sometimes it could be very expensive and then time consuming to try to obtain complete data concerning the population. Now, summary measures for a population is called a population parameter. Let me explain this. When you collect data on the population, you can summarize it using, let's say, a mean, as I indicated earlier. That computation you make is called a parameter, as opposed to a summary measure for a sample, which is called a statistic. So uh, a mean from the population is called a population parameter or a population mean, whereas the mean from a sample is a sample statistic called, for example, the sample mean. Now we turn our attention to data and variables. When we talk about data, we're looking at a set of measurements or observations taken on a group of objects. For example, we might be interested in taking information on the age, height, weight, and gender of all a con 214 students enrolled in the distance program. A variable, on the other hand, is a characteristic of an object. For example, looking at just the height. Data collected on only one variable is called univariate data, whereas data collected on more than one variable is called multivariate data. Data can be quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative data is numeric in nature. So, for example, we talk about the weight of a person, the income earned by families, the number of bottles of beer consumed in a day. So it is numeric. Qualitative data, on the other hand, provides an attribute of the data or describes an attribute of the data. So it is non-numeric. For example, gender. You are either male or female. Religion, marital status, married, single, etc. Quantitative variables are either discrete or continuous. When we talk about discrete variables, we are talking about variables that can assume what we call countably finite or, uncountable, uh, or countably infinite uh, values. They assume distinct values, such as whole numbers. So, for example, we can talk about the number of children in a family, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The number of years of school completed, perhaps if I attended school for six years, meaning primary 1 to 6, or nine years, primary 1 to GHS 3. The number of rooms in a building, so you, they are countably finite. In some circumstances, they are said to be countably infinite. We'll look at that as we proceed. Continuous variables, on the other hand, can take any number within a defined range. So for example, if we took the height of a person, and we can, the height of a person can fall between 5 and 6 feet. And between 5 and 6 feet, you can find an infinite number of measurements within that range. Because somebody could be 5.1 feet, feet, but somebody else could be 5.1.1 feet. And yet a third person could be 5.1.1.1. So three decimal places then, and then you continue. So you can find an infinite uh, number of values within a given range. And continuous variables typically result from measuring, or they result from measurement. So this 
diagram summarizes the types of data. So when you take data, as I said earlier, it could be either qualitative or quantitative. Quantitative data in turn is grouped into discrete or continuous. We wrap up the session with the sources of data. Where do we get data? Where does data come from? Data can be obtained from a variety of sources. It can come from within organizations, or it can also come from outside organizations. These days, with the advent of um, ICT, you can obtain data from the internet. For example, as economists, we are able to assess data from World Bank sources to do our analysis. You can also go to the IMF website to get data for economic analysis. Very often, some data are not available and they have to be collected from scratch. And these data are often obtained through what we call surveys, using questionnaires. A survey may be carried out with respect to an entire population or just a sample. Typically, surveys are carried out with respect to a sample, for which reason we call them sample surveys. But when it is done with respect to entire population, they are referred to as um, population census. As I indicated earlier, these are two main references for this course and the chapters you have to read for the introductory aspects of this course have been indicated in the study guide. Thank you very much. I'll see you again soon.